Okay, so we can start. Well, first thing we're going to do is create a project uh, in our studio. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it tutorial one. I'm going to put that folder where I want in my computer. And uh, I have downloaded all the things uh, from the edX platform. I'm going to move all these files in this folder. Um, and then I'm going to open our studio. And the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new project. It's a new directory. No, actually, an existing directory because we want to put it in the folder that I have just created. So that's, uh, I know where it is. I'm just going to associate that folder with my project. And I'm going to create my project here. So here we go. Our studio loads it. So this is the environment. I'm assuming that when you're looking at this, you've already downloaded our studio and uh, R, and um, probably have tried a few things. Um, we're gonna open a script that I have put in there. So see when we, um, I'm gonna do cancel and go back. If we click on this icon here, it opens immediately the folder associated with the project. Another way of checking that is type in this in the console and it will tell us uh, the location of the um, working directory associated with uh, where our studio is working from. So if I go and click on open, it automatically opens the folder associated with this project and I'm interested in opening script one. So here we go, just gonna make this bigger so that we can see there are the four familiar panes uh, so we're going to start with the introduction here and um, first you need to install packages. Packages are tools that enable different things to happen within R and R Studio environment. And these include functions and commands that already somebody has written for you. Um, there are packages for diverse needs. So for instance, I used one to simulate the demographic data in this module. Other packages enable particular statistical analysis. Some of them target manipulation, some of them target visualization. Two mainstream packages that are used for network analysis are iGraph and StatNet. So we'll start with installing iGraph. Um, your R environment does not have that pre-installed by default normally, so you need to go through the following steps. You need to download that park package uh, through the R environment into your computer and then you need to load the package. So this is the first command that I run. So I highlight the command I'm interested in and I can click the run button and that would start installing um, the package. So that what that does is it um, loads the package onto my machine. I mean, I have had it installed before, but that what is likely to happen. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to load that into your library. So here, when you have the different packages, you want that to be loaded. So I highlight it and I can either click on run or I can use a combination that um, enables that. So I can check uh, whether iGraph has been loaded by scrolling down and seeing, okay, I have that package here and it is in fact um, loaded into my environment. So because we're learning to get us started, we will be using data sets that are already a part of other packages. So that's why we're going to run this command that says install packages iGraph data, which downloads the package called iGraph data that already has some data sets within it. So you highlight it and you run the command. Same thing, that what this line does is it installs this package from the internet into your machine. And then the next thing it's going to do, after it loads, is that you're going to have to make sure that the data, uh, the package has been loaded onto your machine. And I'm just making sure my internet is going to be working just fine. So I'll just want to check if this is the first time everything was working well. Okay, so let's take a look at the data sets within this package I grab data. For that, you have to run the command that uh, says data 
and it automatically opens this. So you see there are data sets in the package iGraph data. Some of them, these are the names of the data sets. We'll use some of them um, to learn to analyze uh, networks. So let's start with a network where ties and nodes are precisely defined so we can focus on the formal network metrics. So I suggest that we look first at the U.S. airport network. That's the network of U.S. airports uh, as of uh, December 2010. To look at that data, we're going to run this command that says data U.S. airports. So I highlight it and I run it, which is either by... Um, a combination of keys or by clicking that button that loads the data set. To see what the data set looks like we can highlight the name of the data set and run it and it shows us here is the um, iGraph object right um, that's called US Airport that's the name of it we see that's a iGraph object it's a directed network that has 755 nodes and 23,573 edges um, metadata is U.S. airports. We have some names uh, of the nodes. We also know about the um, cities uh, where the airports are located, I guess. So the carriers that are connecting the cities um, and all sorts of other information like the type of aircraft or distance or number of passengers. We also see these little abbreviations here, VC and EC. And that really refers to whether this is an attribute for a vertex, a vertex or a node. Uh, that, so that's the node in a graph, and whether it's an attribute of an edge, so the tie in a graph. So we have different kinds of attributes. And then it gives us an example of what an edge looks like. So I'm not. Um, so this is a tie, um, a direction from an airport A and C to JFK. Um, or from airport CLT to BNA, you can Google and find out what these are. Right, so we may want to um, look up some of these uh, specific um, attributes. To do that, we want to call the attribute by specifying that we want to look at the vertex of a network called U.S. Airport, airports, and the attribute of the vertex that we're interested in is, for instance, position. So if we run that command, we're going to have 755 node attributes. We see position that's um, northwest, so it tells us where those nodes are geographically located on the map. But that's too much, right? It takes all the screen. So what we could do is by clicking an error, uh, uh, go up, right? It shows, just shows us what we've just typed. And we can ask only to see the top of this uh, entire vector by asking to call only the head of the vector. So that will just give us a little bit and show us what that would look like. So let's say we want, um, let's go back and look again at this object, US airports, right? So here we are, we have a whole bunch of different attributes. So we want to look at what do attributes of um, this um, carrier would does that look like in a data set? So we run that command. Right, so we know that that is an edge attribute. Right, so here it's specified that it's an edge attribute of the network object. And this is the name of the attribute. And we know that that means that the sort of flights from airport A to airport B is delivered by British Airways and we may have uh, the same two cities but the tie is going to be by China Airlines for instance. We can also look at the attribute of the edges in terms of passengers just to know what it means right because we cannot be sure so we can run just the top of that vector right because if we run this whole line we're going to have um, a lot of edges it's all, all over 
2300 uh, 23000 edges in that network so we can see that that means that the edge for instance um, this edge so the direction from um, one city to another uh, that's uh, carried out by British Airways carried 193 people right uh, so once you're exploring this data you can also well, you may also want to plot it just to look what the network looks like. So the typical command for that would be plot and the name of the object, network object that you're interested in. So I can just run that and it's going to plot it here. It's going to look pretty messy because it's a really large network. So we're going to give it time to do it. Um, but what you would realize once the plot shows, yeah, here it is, is that it is absolutely impossible to make sense out of it. And so that's why plotting really large networks requires care. Plotting small networks may be a little bit easier in RStudio, but the best bet for plotting is exporting a network object and looking at it uh, in Gephi, which we will do as well. So um, let's look at what the smaller network would look like. So for that reason, remember, we looked at what data sets were available. One of them was this karate data set. So that's a classic data set of um, two karate clubs. So let's load that data from the uh, iGraph package that we have. So I'm just going to run that. I'm going to check out the data by typing the network object name. So we can see undirected weighted network, right? So no direction between the ties, but there are a certain intensity of interactions. 34 nodes in here, 78 edges. The, meta, the name of the network is Zachary's Karate Club Network. And we have some node attributes, such as um, here, uh, names, so we know names. If you remember, we can check what that looks like by typing vertex, name of the network object, dollar sign, and the name of the attribute we're interested in. So if we do that, we can see all the individual names of the nodes. Uh, it retrieves a vector, this command. Um, we can also look at the weight, so the number of, um, the number attached to each uh, edge. So that here is that uh, attribute. To look it up, we're going to ask to retrieve an edge of a karate object. And uh, the attribute name is weight. So we can see that overall the intensity, uh, the weight is not very high. So these people had a weight of four or five, some of them seven. But overall, um, Difference. We can look at the mean of this vector by doing something like that. So we call command mean over our numeric vector, and it gives us the mean um, edge weight. And there are other sort of simple uh, things you can do over a numeric vector like this. But what I wanted to, to look at is if we plot this uh, network, it shows it pretty nicely, so we can see that the network of this size can be shown in layout, and it's already been pre-prepared, pre-processed within the package, so it uh, is colored nicely based on the two communities. So if you look up the story of the data set, you'll realize what's important about these communities and why there are two central uh, actors in each of the two uh, subgraphs uh, constituted in this larger graph. But basically, uh, the major things you should uh, learn is that um, once you have your data set that is in a network object, or if you're using a network from a package to train right now, there is some information that you can uh, retrieve by running the name of the network object in the console and by plotting the network possibly. Um, you can also export the U.S. airports networks, as I suggested, um, and use it in a sort of uh, in a different software where it's easier to manipulate um, and see what it looks like. So to use that, you would uh, use the command that says write graph. Now to learn about commands, and this is a useful scale, uh, if you type question mark and the name of the um, command um, you're interested in and press enter. Then in the help menu, you're going to learn something about this command. So here it tells you there's general function for exporting graphs. And it tells you the general format. So in that sense, it means write graph, give it a name, 
uh, or take the name of the network object. Um, so I'll show you an example of how this applied in practice in a second, but just before you export an object, it's always a good idea just to make sure you know where you're writing it into. So in this sense, I have set a folder in advance, so I know that whatever I'm exporting is our studio is going to write that object into the folder that I have associated with the project. So that's important to check, otherwise you may be looking for your project all over your computer. And so here, following this general format over here, right, so write graph is the command, so I type it up. Then I use the name of the network I'm interested in, such as US Airport, because I want to be able to visualize that network in a different uh, software. Um, then in uh, inverted commas, I specify the name, what will become the name of the file that's exported. So I call it US uh, Airports Gephi.graphml because graphml is the extension I'm interested in. And then after comma, I specify that the format of this object is going to be graphml. There are other formats. So it could be a PyEC, um, for instance, and that I would have uh, a different extension after a dot here. Uh, it could be a GML format. Those are conventionally used by other uh, software. So Pyak is another um, uh, software that could be used. So here I go with that. And what happens? I am going for a second to look in this folder associated with my project. And here we are. I have put a file in here 